All right, welcome to section 1.9. This video has taken way too long to make. We were out of power for two days. Um, then my microphone died, so we're on my backup microphone. Sorry for the sound quality. And then the first two attempts of this video, the first one I didn't like it, so I started over. The second one, I had a weird graphical error. In the middle of the third one, the power went out again. In the middle of the fourth one, the power went out again. So this is attempt number five. So let's do this thing before the power goes out. So in 1.9, we're looking at the idea of a linear transformation, which we've already introduced ourselves to, and how it applies to the idea of computer graphics. Uh, so before we really dive into that, let me just give you a quick reminder. Uh, let's see, let's get on the right layer. Let me give you a quick reminder of how matrix multiplication works. So I'm just making up some matrix here. So let's go 2, negative 3, 1, 4. And let's say you want to multiply that by, by 2, 3. And just to remind you, uh, this does mean that we're going to take the first column of the matrix here and multiply it by 2. And we'll take the second column of the matrix, multiply it by 3, and then add those two together and that will be our results. Uh, so we'll get something like uh, 2 times 2 negative 3 plus 3 times 1 4 and let's see you can work that out that's 4 negative 6 plus 3 12 and that equals 7 6. Um, and that's all fine, we know this already. Uh, let me just point out, if you think of this in the language of functions, of, of a matrix as a function, and we essentially took a vector 2, 3 as an input, and the output was 7, 6. And if you care to think of those as x, y coordinates, you could say that we just transformed a point in space, uh, the point 2, 3, to the point 7, 6. And this is where the graphics idea comes into it. You could do this with two-dimensional points. Obviously, you could do this with three-dimensional points as well. And as you know, matrix operations are easy enough that you can actually do them by hand. Like, it's literally addition and multiplication with whole numbers for the most part. So let me take you back briefly to 1993. A young Abel Gage was sitting in the computer lab at college and the person next to me uh, was playing this video game. I know, I, don't, I didn't think college students actually played video games, but, uh, but he was playing this video game I'd never seen before called Doom. And I was kind of blown away, uh, first of all, because it was very bloody, and second of all, because they had this amazing way to scroll around corridors and you could like turn and look around and everything shifted and it scrolled so smoothly all of those transformations happened very quickly uh, there had been other games before this that kind of tried to do this but they didn't run nearly so quickly or smoothly oh here we got to get the we got to get the soundtrack yeah that's the stuff Okay, enough of that. Um, and part of the reason that Doom could run so well, even on a 1993 era computer, was that it was take, making use of uh, matrix transformations. So we'll, and which again, pretty easy to do for a computer. Uh, so we'll take a little bit of a look at how that works. Um, let's get ourselves a grid, oops, and let me uh, give you a little bit of vocab. Uh, we need to consider two vectors in particular. Uh, we want to consider the vector 1, 0, and we want to consider the vector 0, 1. Uh, these vectors have notation, which is fairly standard. Not every linear algebra text uses this, but most of them do. Uh, E1 and E2. This is the two-dimensional version, and 
obviously you could have a three-dimensional version as well um, and if you have the three-dimensional version they call them E1, E2, E3 and they just let it be clear from context whether you're in two dimensions or three dimensions. Right? Uh, for the moment we'll stick with two dimensions. Once we know how it works in two dimensions it's the exact same math in three dimensions or even seven dimensions although that's not very useful as far as computer graphics go because our puny little brains can't really visualize things in seven dimensions. But, um, uh, so the basic idea here is if we know what happens to E1 and E2, we know what happens to everything else. E1, of course, is the basic x direction. Right? So there's E1. E2 uh, is the basic y direction. And suppose we have some transformation that takes E1 and turns it into into this. So that would be the transformation of E1. And suppose it takes E2 and turns it into that. Uh, so that would be the transformed version of E2. Um, so there's probably some matrix that does this, right? Like like up here, this matrix turned 2, 3 into something else. So there's probably a matrix that turns 1, 0 into, what is this? Like 1, 2, 3, into 4, 2. So the transformation of E1 turned into, into 4, 2. And the transformation of E2 turned into negative 1, 2. There's probably some matrix that does that. And if we can figure out the matrix that does that, everything else will come along with it, right? Everything else will move in perspective, uh, in line with those transformations. Uh, if you haven't watched the uh, YouTube video that I link in this page on Canvas, you really should. He does a way better job with the computer graphics. He's got some really slick animations and explains all of that really well. But we're going to focus a little bit more here on the numbers and the theory. But, but definitely check that out. It's a good video. Um, okay, so we now want to say what is the matrix that will change our basic E1 and E2 into these transformed E1 and E2. And once we can write that matrix down, we'll have the matrix that transforms everything accordingly. Uh, so this is kind of the theorem. I'm going to just write it out in very general terms. Uh, so as go E1 and E2, so goes everything else. So again, if we can figure out the matrix that does what we want it to do just to these two vectors, it'll do what we want to do to all points and all vectors in two-dimensional space. Um, so uh, we wanted E1 to change into 4, 2. And we wanted E2 to change into negative 1, 2. Um, and notice this little matrix I wrote down was essentially the image of E1 and the image of E2. This, by the way, is what they call the standard matrix of the transformation. Or the, or the standard transformation matrix. So when your book asks for the standard transformation matrix, this is what they're talking about. But let's just check and make sure it works, because I kind of wrote it down and didn't prove it. So let's just at least verify it. So if I multiply the standard transformation matrix by 1, 0, does it turn 1, 0 into 4, 2? 
And I think you can see it does, right? Because that would be one of the first column and zero of the second column. So one of four, two, plus zero of negative one, two. Uh, it does indeed make four, two. And I think you can also see that if we were to multiply this matrix by zero, one, that we would also get negative one, two. So in general, the standard matrix of the transformation will be made out of transformation of E1 as the first column, transformation of E2 as the second column. And then it's really just a matter of figuring out what you want to E1 to transform into if you have sort of a graphical idea. If you say, oh, I want to rotate 45 degrees or whatever else. You just need to figure out, oops, this is going over here. <laughs> uh, you just need to figure out where those actually go. But that's the basic idea. So let's clear this off and see if we can try it again with another shape. Um, so let's say that you've got uh, you've got this sort of Tetris shape looking thing here. And let's say the transformation that you want to do with this thing is you want to flip it over and let's say flip it over and make it only half as long horizontally so the transformed version will look like flipped over but instead of going out one two three it'll only go out one and a half Let's see, yeah, that was a two, so now it should be a one. Okay, um, so that's the transformation that we want to make on this particular one. Obviously there's a lot of points moving here, but if we can figure out where two particular points need to go, <coughs> let's look at E1, which is right here. And let's look at, see I already used purple, so let's look at E2, which is right there. Um, so E1, which is originally 1, 0, uh, needs to get transformed into something else. And particularly as E1 gets transformed, like every other point on this graph, we want it to flip over horizontally, so this way. And we only want it to go half as, as far as it did before. So there's the transformation of E1, about right there. Uh, and we want E1 to change into um, negative, 0.5 0 um, notice E2 didn't change at all so we want E2 to stay exactly the same so again, there's E1, there's the transformation of E1, and there's E2, and the transformation of E2. <coughs> and notice, by the way, this isn't just some accident of E2 being on the axis. So it's right, every sort of vertical distance uh, stays the same on this transformation. Uh, okay, so the standard matrix of the transformation then should just be made up of transformation of E1, 
transformation of E2. So it should be made up of negative 0.5, 0, 0, 1. Um, and you can certainly see it transforms the two points that we already knew about to the right spots. Um, but let's just check another random point in our transformation. Let me pick out, um, how about this point right here? Let's just make sure it goes to the right point under this transformation. That's the point one, two, three, one. So three, one. So if we multiply 3, 1 by our transformation matrix, I know it's supposed to end up over here, right? That's that same point after it gets flipped over and squished in some. Uh, so it should end up at negative 1 and a half, 1. Uh, so let's just make sure that that's really where it ends up. Uh, so 3 times the first column plus 1 times the second column would become negative 1.50 plus 0, 1, and adding those two together uh, it becomes negative 1.51, 1, which negative 1.51 1 is the right new coordinates for that spot. Um, so in practice, for computer graphics, especially if you've got straight sides like this, um, you would just transform the corners, and then you program would know to connect those corners. So you'd only have to transform one, two, three, four, five, six points. Uh, and this is a pretty fast transformation. Again, this is what lets something like Doom uh, transform so quickly. Uh, so this video is plenty long already. Um, in the next video we'll unpack this a little bit more. We'll look at a few examples of transformations and I am going to finish this one off before the power goes out.